<laughs> Hello. Welcome to the DS106 Slow Show. Some people say we go too fast. The DS106. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to uh, the Headless uh, DS106 uh, Week 5. And I've got two of my favorite heads in the video here, Ben Rhymes and Julia Forsyth. Uh, and we expect Emily Strong to pop on at top of the hour. And hopefully some other internet friends and strangers might... Uh, pop in, but uh, welcome, Ben, and uh, give us a little uh, intro or uh, your best blurb about DS-106, or tell us what you ate for lunch. <laughs> what I ate for lunch. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Ben, and I work in a K-12 school, uh, basically helping out uh, teachers and students with technology, doing stuff like that, and uh, oh, oh, my mic is muted. Can you hear me? I yeah. can hear you. Okay, so, um, and uh, I help out teachers and students with technology and uh, doing all sorts of interesting things, fun things, like DS-106 type things, media assignments and, and whatnot, and I'm excited about it because it uh, gives me a real-world reference. Um, quite often in the classroom we talk about, well, how do I create a real-world-like scenario for my students to deal with? And... DS-106 is one of those things where it's like, well, it's not a real-world-like scenario. It is the real world. Check it out. There are people participating at uh, not just the K-12 level, but the post-secondary level, as well as artists and designers and media people. And so I can say, look, here you go. You know, use this as a good uh, example of something your students can wrestle with. Cool. And you're in a cube. And I'm in a cube. Yep. Who's the, who's the dude who popped up over your shoulder? He was looking coming, at Coming, coming up over this way. <laughs> he had a little pop-up. That was sick. <laughs> yes, we we have our little cube farm here in our technology department. So it's it's new to us this year, and we're getting used to it. Very cool. Uh, so uh, I know we want to talk about it this week, but so you're able to kind of translate what was really a, a course designed for higher ed to um, elementary school kids, right? Yeah, I've taken a number of the uh, uh, a number of the assignments and uh, and translated into something that that is easily digestible by that level. You know, a lot of times. Uh, we don't necessarily get into the, the, the blogging and the meat of the, the, the process and the art behind it, uh, but something like the four icon challenge, you can take that and say, hey, let's use this as a, um, as a formative assessment piece to say, hey, can you identify the four, you know, three or four main elements of, of this story? You know, pick a story or a song or something like that and, and come up with four icons that you could use or images that you could use. And it's, it's a really great piece. I've also done the, uh, um, the sound story as a way to introduce students to um, uh, GarageBand and Audacity, you know, rather than just saying, let's go in and record our voices, let's create, um, you know, let's create a sound effect story, something like that. So give them an actual task to accomplish. It's kind of fun. Cool. And Julia Forsyth, longtime DS-106er, from the beginning. From the beginning. So my name is Julia Forsyth. Ben, I remember when you did uh, those, and, and I loved seeing um, the little kids doing all the, the four icon challenges in particular. I don't remember seeing the other uh, sound stories, but they were really inspiring. And right from the get-go, uh, that first year in 2011, I was really inspired by DS-106. So um, I am a special projects facilitator. I work in the Center for Pedagogical Innovation here at Brock University in St. Catharines, Ontario. Canada, and uh, I, I um, basically help faculty integrate technology into their teaching in many different ways. So DS-106 has been really, really helpful in even just picking, just like uh, Ben said, like he just chooses little little elements. We don't do the full, full-blown um, thing, but it, I can always have this as a point of reference. And then personally, as a student, it's, it's been really, really fun and engaging. And although I've not been as active as I would like to be, I'm, I mean, we could just do this 24 hours a day if we wanted to, if, if, you know, we didn't have to go to work and do all these other responsibilities. But I'm really excited to do visual because this is my favorite week, so I'm really excited to be here. Very cool. So uh, talk a little bit about uh, what this uh, week represents, maybe, in your mind, and, uh, and also just from your experience, it's kind of the DS-106 flow, because this is kind of where we hit the meat of the course. Well, and here's the thing. So um, I've noticed on the on the page, um, the the DS one hundred six page. There's actually quite a bit of content there. That's kind of even though it's headless, there's some really good guiding things. And I thought, 
what we could spend this time doing is like the uh, abbreviated busy person's guide to, to what's what do we have to do this week, right? Like just basically uh, summarizing what's on that page. So I saw that there's a cool video to watch and um, some suggested assignments. So maybe, Alan, you could help take us through. Uh, right from the beginning, you're saying, how what's the fastest way for us to get to this week's assignments? I The DS-106 page um, is changing and evolving, and I can't seem to get to the this week's really quickly. So. Oh, I got it. I got it. I'll share it. Uh. But in, in in words, how do you get there? Like, if I go to the site, and I'm like, okay, I want to go to the fall DS-106. Uh, just the at the bottom, of, if you just go to the home page, or, or yeah. the weekly announcements will do it, but at the bottom, let's see, under uh, current assignment, right under the animated headless with the flames coming at it on the home page, Current, yeah. Week five, telling stories and photos. That's the sizzle. That's it. Great. Right. Are you going to share it, or you want me to share it? You share it. All right. So screen share activated. <laughs> oh my God, I got like 90 windows open. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come up first with the wrong thing, which is the assignments page. That's but, pretty um, close. That's close to the right that's thing. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. <laughs> I had it right here. <laughs> See? Oh, this, this is our... Uh, I like how the website uh, represents the complexity of DS-106. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the mess in it. So uh, I want to say, first of all, is that um, these, are, these have always been kind of long, and, and they're longer still because I've been trying to um, compile stuff from, from previous semesters. And so for people in the headless, of course, um, you guys aren't getting graded. So you can do whatever you want. So it's more of a menu of things for you to try uh, from the compilation of, of each. So I try to start with just a little bit of an intro in the yellow box and then um, ignore the way that the theme is not really doing the embed right. But uh, I decided to add each week sort of like an introduction uh, inspiration, um, sort of relevant to the theme. And so yeah, no, Bar I like it. Barbara it Ganley had tweeted this uh, video interview with this photographer. Uh, and he's talking about this book that he published. And um, he has some really profound ways of talking about the decisions he makes uh, as a photographer. And so um, I'm really happy about that. And I even... I, I really thought, you know what I thought was interesting, the way he talked about when you look at, a, at something, because we see things in three dimensions, that you have to think of it in two dimensions when you take your picture. And I've been a photographer, like what I consider, I've been taking pictures for most of my life, and I never even considered that perspective of, of the, the visual grammar of what he's talking about. So that's definitely worth a watch. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and that's very true. I never really, you know, I've been doing photos for a while too, and I never really thought about that. That is what the photographic process does. So um, it, it's sort of changing, but also enhancing the reality that you're seeing through your camera. Uh, so uh, as an introduction, uh, I love this photo. This is by one of my students in the spring that she did for this unit. Um, Jen, and, and she had this great quote that she had from uh, Ansel Adams about there's no rules for good photographs, they're only good photographs. Uh, so I, I may even try, you know, as I repost the content from mainly the syllabus from the spring 2013 semester, to try to incorporate the media created uh, for the students that week. So um, getting into what we're going to do this week, um, not a visual thing related, but we're starting the formation of the teams for the group audio projects, which yeah, will, and there's a there's a Google Doc, right? Yeah, yeah, and this will happen in week seven and eight, where you do the bulk of your work. But when Martha and I taught it last fall, we kind of pulled back the audio um, to the week before this, so we we introduce our students to audio earlier, and then we give them a little bit more time to do the team formation, which is more interesting and challenging in online format because we can't just say, hey, let's meet at the library or the coffee shop, like the Mary Washington students can do. Um, so we have an open Google Doc. We're just asking people to form teams. Some of them are already setting up brainstorming docs. Some of them have already decided themes. Uh, what we really want to do is just like rally your, your groups or find one or put your name on a list. Um, next week when we do design as our topic, we'll ask the radio groups to design a poster or a logo for their group. So we're kind of ramping up um, into week seven and eight, um, which is three weeks from now or two weeks, uh, doing the actual work on the audio show. That's cool. I signed up. Cool. Did you sign Who's up, Ben? 
and I had to unmute myself. Sorry. Um, I did not sign up. I'm busy clicking all these other links and reading. See, it's a lot. <laughs> it think, really is. Yes, I think I you were think very we kind. I think we down to the end of what the summary of what needs to be done this week. <laughs> summary what? checklist. The summary check. Let's form. Yeah. Wow. This is my strategy. This is the busy person's way of of getting through this course. And then we, when you have time, you can look at all the other interesting things. Well, but, um, I hope. I mean, the reason, oh, the whole reason for doing this headless is that there was nothing really organized for open participants. You always had to find your way. So I thought. I'm so confused. Yeah. <laughs> since we had so much material, let's just pile it very high. So, um, you know. Oh my and, word! And, this is impressive. Maybe it's too much. So, um, but this is pretty much, you know, my students last semester did all this. So there's, you know, of course they were getting credit, um, but sure. you know, they had other jobs, they had other things to do. They found time. No well, no, comment. I'm going to choose. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely select a couple things. I think you should read through the list and find things that really resonate with you that are really interesting. And if you don't even, if the assignments, if there's not an assignment there that interests you, there's like. An assignment bank full of things that we we get to dig yeah. into this this month. So and, and we're going to get to that. Week. Yeah. Um, so the next thing is just uh, part of uh, what we hope happens when we start doing these um, visual um, uh, assignments. Is of course people are going to be using their cameras a lot. So a lot of people, you know, a lot of people take pictures, um, but often they're kind of more snapshots. Um, and we just want people to do some deliberate exercises to think about ways just to improve the way they compose and choose their subjects. So um, this is more resource. Um, I grabbed these tips from a $5 ebook that I found really powerful about 10 ways to improve um, your uh, photographic skills. Um, last couple rounds, I always asked on Twitter for people to share um, their tips. And this is kind of a compilation that I threw together um, in a, a Storyfy. Um, but the, the first one is actually um, a Google Doc that includes things that were written by uh, previous DS-106 students uh, with examples of their work. Can I just say that's really neat? I've never seen, I know this is a little bit of a meta comment, but I've never seen Storify embedded like that into, like, as a slideshow? Is that a different, is that a new thing? Yeah, in, instead of the, the long vertical running one, you can yeah. use sort of the slideshow. I love that. And it, it picks the, cool. the summary information. That's pretty handy. Um, and then we just ask people to try some of those particular tips that they find in their photographs, blog about it, and reflect on, on what they may have seen different or changed. Cool. Um, there's a couple of videos. These are from um, presentations that uh, happened in the fall 2012 class when Jim and I taught. Right. Um, so these are just extra resources. Um, and then even down below that are some audio from 2011. Um, when Darcy Norman did his um, bit um, by audio to Jim's class, I was listening in my in this office. <laughs> <laughs> in that, that very part place. of what really excited me about the course was listening yeah. to these people calling in on the radio. It was all radio based then. It was really yeah. cool. And, and then next, um, as as opposed to like being very thoughtful, um, this is an exercise that uh, Jim and I came up with in our class to sort of um, put the the students in our class in activity mode. And we would tell them to bring their cameras or their um, phone cameras to class. And we would give them like a scavenger hunt to do in the, the building. And we would give them three things because we only gave them like 10 minutes. But the idea was uh, just try to find, be creative about the ways you represent more or less a scavenger hunt within a constrained amount of time. So it's sort of practicing your inventiveness, but also, again, looking for details that you haven't seen before. So. When Martha and I did this as an online class, um, we, we figured out we could do the same thing. People just do their own photo blitz, uh, as we call it. So um, I shortened it to 15 minutes because I felt that was 20 was way too long. Um, but pretty much the idea is um, I wouldn't even look at the list ahead of time. Now, I've done it a couple times, so I know some of the items. But, um, and I just did mine about uh, 40 minutes ago. Uh, I did it around my house. And the idea is, okay, you set a time, I'm going to start this. You take a picture of a clock somewhere, that's your start time, and then you just try to capture as many images as you can, you don't have to get them all, that um, interpret these sort of things. You know, take a photo of something at an unusual angle. Um, so some of them are technique, some of them are metaphorical. Take a photo that represents the idea of openness, you know, so we get a lot of doors and things like that. An interesting shadow. And what we find is that students are like, 
tuning in to um, kind of seeing the world a little bit differently. So they're looking for things that they might not ordinarily do before, um, like the converging lines. It's it's really good because every time I did this with my students, they would say, "What are converging lines?" And then like you know, I point to the hallway and say, "Look at the way the floor and the ceiling merge together in the distance." Um, and that's that's sort of a technique that photographers uh, use to draw people into an image or to a subject. Um, I'm definitely so going to do that one for sure. Yeah. That one, that's a good one. Yeah, the idea here is. Do we know if anybody else managed to do it before the before now? Yeah, there were some pictures in there. I just and we'll look at the um, the Flickr stream in a second if you want to. Um, but the idea uh, again is just to practice some quick thinking on your feet, not necessarily do the greatest photos. And um, I did mine on my iPhone this time because I was just in a rush. Um, a do some daily creates this week. Um, a couple tips that we have out there for just you know we use Flickr for our photo things, uh, but there's a couple things that people can do. Uh, just to, you know, that aren't kind of set by default in terms of how to use Flickr a little bit better. Um, and there's a couple of these tips that were written by uh, previous students. And then we get into the visual assignments, like the topic of this week, where we're going to use the assignment bank. Um, and there's 100, I think I just looked at 145 things in there. And um, I thought we maybe we would, um, in the show, talk about um, some of them and um, maybe you guys share some of your experience with ones you liked um, or how you go about picking which one to do. Uh, so um, you can, there's a link I have here that will just pull up one at random. So if you like spinning the dial, that's kind of a fun challenge. Yeah, that's uh, fun. Uh, Rochelle Lockridge is doing her DS106 inside the internet at 3M and she's having all of her people do the post secret one which is like writing a dream on a post-it note. It's a pretty easy assignment. Um, that's but pretty, again, that's pretty cool. I've seen a couple come in. Emily did hers already, which should, hopefully she'll show you when she yeah, comes. Yeah. And then uh, put a list of ones that have been more popular or more people have done um, in the history. So if there's just some ways to find out what to do. And then um, the importance of tagging your blog post with the assignment tag so it shows up in as an example. And then reinforcing our idea that we want people to do more than just post a picture and say, that's my assignment. We want them to blog about it and reflect on it. So that is the speed version of this week. Can um, I ask a question? You can ask a question. You have, is your hand raised? <laughs> um, so I was. Uh, what if I did the photo blitz, blitz with a buddy photo and I tried to tag both? Would that work? Yeah. Like it's, would go well, would it go to both places in the assignment bank? Because there was a time where it, you had to just choose one. Just one. <laughs> yes, it will work. Hi, Mariana. Hello. Uh, you might have to turn on your microphone in the uh, top right because Google decides, oh, she's going across the room. <laughs> it's a high-tech scenario. I mean, I, I like the way Google by um, default mutes people. I think it's like if there's more than a certain number of people, yeah. it, it mutes new people, which is kind of smart, but then people don't know that they're muted. So um, this is exciting. This is the first time we've, I've seen her. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> Yes. I can hear you yes. now. Okay, I just went to get my microphones. <laughs> Yay. You were fast. That this was very good. <laughs> this is exciting. This is the first time we've seen you. You're you're you know, opening that little door of, of being on the web, right? Well, just just making an exception for for uh, for for you today, for for all of you, but uh, <laughs> I, I feel won't have it I mean, Last week was great, uh, Julia, because I got to see Nigel, who's, who's, you know... Oh, I know. I watched that one, actually. Yeah. It was fun. There were so many people in there. I just said, oh, another another voice, but I actually watched it. It was so cool to, to hear his voice. Usually, he's just tweeting, so... Yeah. Yeah, that was a great uh, crew you had last week, too. Almost as good as this week. <laughs> so, <laughs> meet, meet uh, Ben and Julia, who have done DS-106 several times through and are, are stalwart DS-106 for lifers, as are you. <laughs> yes, for sure. Marianne, I love your enthusiasm. I, I meant to, um, to write about your, your video blog. It was excellent. It was so good to, to see you uh, beat the RSI or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's you... lovely. It's really lovely to see all of you and to get a chance to talk. And Ben, it's lovely to kind of get a chance to also be able to talk to you because I feel like I know you, but I never made any of your hangouts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've just had this one-way relationship up until now. Although, uh, yeah, it, it's 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 a pleasure to to actually see you and talk with you as well uh, after all of the work through the book club and. Uh, the uh, DS106 community on Google Plus. So uh, I know Julia has. You only have a couple minutes left, right? Or yeah, I have an appointment at one, so we're just or one my time. So I have about seven more minutes, and then I'll have to duck out. And now, Marianne, we were just going through, um, you know, what was kind of recommended for this week, and then we were going to talk about. I think we we're about just talking about the post secret and and maybe some of the choices. And I was asking a question about doubling up the assignments so I can get, you know, um, feel like I'm doing twice as much by doing the same assignment twice. <laughs> to answer your question, Joy, yes, you can uh, multiple tag um, assignments. It should that's work. awesome. That's that's a great development. So I might bring my buddy for me to do my photo blitz. Do, do you want to um, talk about some of the assignments then? That... Well, these are interesting ones. I mean, I've seen some really funny ones, but I've actually never done any of these before, if you can believe it. So the, that's the, a lot the, for me to choose from. Which ones? Uh, the ones that are on the list from the website, the ones oh, that, you okay. that are really popular ones. I mean, obviously, the anime GIF is one of my favorite. Yeah, that's a visual. Oh. That's on Visual Week too, I'm sure. Um, the Four Icon Challenge that Ben mentioned is a really fun one. Um, I, I'm kind of a fan of the Pioneer Patties because of its educational component. So yeah. do, I don't know if you remember that one. Oh yeah, yes, fact, I have it pulled up. Um, let me go back to my screen share so people can see these. That's the uh, the Internet Pioneers holding a uh, sandwich. Yes. Yeah. And I did Ada Lovelace with a burrito. I really yep. enjoyed making that one. And I like the Fat Cats with uh, Renaissance art. I really like that one. I thought I, that one I was had nice. that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm trying to find. Can you see these coming up? But it's good. Yes. I mean, these are one, the, the ones that I'm saying that I liked are ones that I've done before, so I'm glad that mm. there's these new ones to kind of push me. I've never done a triple troll quote, although it's, it's quite easy and, and very funny. I love to see those ones come up. Yeah, here's the okay. Patty Pioneers that Alan's yeah. showing right now. So Scott Lowe was teaching a course, and it was uh, he had to go over the actual history of the Internet, and so I think one of his students thought it would be a great idea to come up with this Patty Pioneers and for some reason put them with a fast food... <laughs> <laughs> piece of fast food. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was almost a joke. Um, it it so was. This is one of, this is one of Scott Lowe's uh, students uh, in his <laughs> Japanese. It was a cyberspace class. And here's Alan Kay pondering the world's Alan biggest uh, Big Mac. Um, and I love this as an example because if you just go to like a group of academics and say, this is what we're teaching, they would say, this is kind of silly and ridiculous. But... Um, Kind of this plane with the the visual, um, it's a little bit on the skill side. So this person did a good job of merging um, Alan Kay into yeah. this scene. Um, he's got the 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 cup in the front of Alan Kay, and but Alan Kay's hand in front of the French fries. So um, it's yeah, on the layering pretty well. Um, but what I remember Scott was saying is that this was all like a, a doorway to get people to understand who these people were. These are the founders um, of the internet. And so, if you just say, um, you know, here is um, <laughs> <laughs> Gordon Moore Morse with a mouthful of French fries. Um, Moore's <laughs> law. Moore's law: the proportion of a uh, of, of French fries that you can fit in your mouth will double every yeah. eight months. And this is this is Paul Bond, who's working with Jim on teaching his um, true crime class right now. Um, so Patty Pioneers is, is certainly a favorite. Um, it's a funny one, anyway. Any others? Yeah. You, you. I know you mentioned a couple. Fat Cats. And the Four um. Icon Challenge too, actually. <laughs> but the Fat Cats with the Renaissance art, I think, is really hilarious. Uh, again, kind of silly. Um, and this, this was um, uh, Annie, who was in Jim's class in spring 2012, and um, I think she had found. Um, a site, a Russian site that did this, like combining yeah. pictures mm -hmm. of classic art with a fat cat. And so she <laughs> proposed it as an assignment, um, which again, it sounds kind of silly, but again, you're going to think about your interpretation um, of the art here. Um, this is um, Paul, I forget his last name, he was in my, my class last uh, fall. Um, so I don't, see, I could read obviously the, the artwork here. Um, 
I just but like I mean, the blend of something that's very serious with something that's really playful as a way, as an entryway into thinking about bigger and wider things. And it leaves it really wide open to kind of, you know, you tell a story with it or, you know, or make some kind of connection. Well, I, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, in, in the K-12 world, you know, we, we, we might look at something like this and, and say, you know, this is, you're, you're taking something that people are, are intimately familiar with, so it's trying to... Uh, you know, activate a little bit of prior knowledge of like everyone understands cats on the internet and and the meme that is. I think cats are just a meme on the internet, and then connecting that with something like this and it, like you said, it, it lowers that barrier and and it takes something that potentially is a little, um, I don't want to say stuffy, but something that might be, um, you know, a little proper and just oh, I can't get into that, and it just adds this element of whimsy to it, and uh, people all of a sudden are taken off guard and oh. Okay, this this stuff is kind of cool. Yeah, this one here is by um, Christina, who was in my fall 2012 class. And, yeah, they're great. Um, I love them. Yeah, th this is a beautiful example, and I remember when she did this because um, she was just learning to do GIMP, so she got her cat cut out. Um, nice. And then she put it um, into the painting. Um, this is the original painting. Uh, but I remember she had trouble figuring out how to do the layering in GIMP, so um, I think I did a little like quick demo for this. So. Um, you know, again, it's kind of a, a silly assignment. You're doing some thinking, but um, you're also going to be expanding some of your um, capabilities. And uh, for these kind of assignments, um, it's really key to learn how to do things in a tool, in an editing tool that uh, does layers, right? For sure. And I think that Emily hopefully will maybe touch on uh, using GIMP, which is a great tool that I would like to learn more about, so I'm definitely going to watch the recording. But now it's 1 o'clock, so I must bow out. But it was great to see you and be part of it thus okay. far, and you, I'll definitely catch you recording say, you can and see you all online. You can say bye to Colin. Hey, Colin. You, you can say bye, oh, Julia. So <laughs> bye, Colin. Famous dog. He's adorable. <laughs> bye. Lovely Very to cool. meet bye. you, Julia. You Thanks too. Bye, 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 Julia. So, I mean, um, Ben, when you're, when you're doing these, I mean, you know, if you're faced with 145 assignments, how do you pick? Um... Yeah, actually, um, it's it's been a while since I've had to look at these, you know, at for the first time. Uh, so as someone that's been in the course and and, and gone through it a few times, um, I I generally will come back and the first thing I'll look at is, has anyone is anyone doing like some of my old assignments, like maybe an assignment I created or maybe an assignment I really enjoyed, and see has anyone riffed on that or has anyone taken that to the next step, sort of like saying, oh, you know, hey. They're continuing that, but I was just exploring just today. I clicked on the examples um, at the top there from the newest and the titles and the ratings, right. and this is actually a pretty good. I mean, a lot of them are are older assignments, but it's actually a pretty good cross reference of a lot of the different types of visual assignments. Um, I that would definitely get people in, like say it like peanut butter, right? That's the classic, you know, create this uh, this this animated GIF. Um, but that would be a, a good way uh, to get people into it if if you've never, you know, if you've never seen it before. Because it seems like a lot of these examples are, are popular ones and ones that have a lot of humor. Um, oh, the newspaper blackout poetry—that's a great one. Yeah, that's a good one. And people often do that, like not even digitally. They'll, they'll get a real newspaper. Um, yeah, and and I guess that's the, those are some of the, the my favorite ones, uh, the visual assignments, the ones that um, are not strictly digital, but the ones that actually require you to do something in the real world or to take something from, you know, the real world, like the the picture of slide guy that was just there at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tim Owens, I got a picture of him or a video of him just going down the slide, and they took a still shot of that. Um, and for those not familiar, Tim is an integral part of DS-106 and the University of Mary Washington, and it was just fun to play with that. And I think I even did a, uh, yeah, I ended up doing a tutorial on that one for how to right, do the magic right. lasso because <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, and so I think assignments like that um, are, are really attractive to me because then I'm doing, you know, I know that people uh, have, have taken something out of the real world um, to say I'm going to take time to, to create this for my... Yeah, there's slide guy on on the, the boulder. <laughs> and this is the key um, part about this. Yeah, uh, uh, sorry, DS106. People um, explaining how they did their stuff um, instead of just posting it or saying, I did this in Photoshop. So um, mm -hmm. ben, ben wrote a pretty detailed tutorial for this. 
Uh, the beauty of this, again, is, I mean, this is a simple assignment, but Martha provided a link to a, um, a PNG version of Tim, um, which means she yep. already cropped them out. Um, so he had that pose. And so you learn something about file format. So PNG is different from JPEG because it has this uh, property called background transparent. So instead of it being a square photo, when you bring it into your graphic editing program, um, he doesn't have a box around him. It's just him. So it's a matter of finding an image. You know, Martha's here is on a truck wheel. Um, who uh, would? Um, but the idea was to take. Um, and here's here's Emily's actually. So um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, she put. She went on a hike um, with her friend and took out a friend and put Tim. Um, That's awesome. On, on this rock. Um, oh, brilliant! <laughs> yeah. And and again, you know. On the surface, you know, silly, but uh, you're doing the um, the thinking, and you know, Michael Branson Smith has a slide guy collection. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's done a lot of slide guys. <laughs> the, um, the the cup, <laughs> Timmy surfing, uh, Timmy on a bowl, <laughs> on the back of a duck ride. Um, well, th this is not. This is not this similar to the one with uh, uh, Jim dancing to yeah, do the animated dancing gifts. Jim. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I have to say, I mean, I thought when I first came across it just before we started Headless, I thought, oh, what a stupid idea. I'm not doing that. And, uh, and then I found myself seeing what other people had done and going, okay, I'm going to do it. And in order to do it, well, I struggled for days because, of course, in order to do it, I actually had to learn how to use GIMP. Right and or or not as the case may be. <laughs> <laughs> and and there, there are a couple things that, that are that I think are important here is that um, in this course we don't um, prescribe which tools you use. Um, in fact, we don't even teach much about using the tools. I mean, the people do it when they write their tutorials. So it's not like this is a class on how to do this in Photoshop or GIMP or or anything. Um, so people are free to choose the stuff they have or pursue some of the open source um, options uh, that we try to recommend. Uh, and the other thing that uh, Mariana alludes to is um, the idea, it's one thing to go through the assignments and pick out things you know you can do. Um, mm -hmm. And there's some easy ones in there, the kind of stuff you can do with an app or you can just do with a picture and paste something on top. And to me, the best way to learn the stuff is try something you don't know how to do. Um, and maybe it comes from looking at the examples. Um, to, to find uh, ones that um, inspire you. And that's, that's why some of those ones that the, you're talking about, Ben, sort of by examples is really powerful because you can, first of all, see a variety of ways people have interpreted the assignment. Um, mm -hmm. but, but generally, I mean, there's a reason why um, those have a lot of examples. Some of it is because, um, you know, we may have had it as a requirement, but um, some of it is just because um, they were compelling ones to do. Yeah. What is your favorite one? I don't have a favorite. They're all my favorite. I like, <laughs> um, I, I have, I put up a whole bunch of uh, tabs here. Uh, so yeah, Slide Guy was already there. Um, mm -hmm. Patty Pioneers was, The Fat Cats. Um, the Fat Cats, I like the uh, Fat Cats. Boone, uh, <laughs> Boone Gorges, Georges, I always get his name pronounced wrong, um, did this one, which like when I first saw it, I was like, I just don't know what this is about, but the parent-child head swap. So you take a picture yeah. of a parent and a child, and you uh, exchange their heads, and it always comes out bizarre um, because, of course, you know a, a kid's head is a different proportion than a baby head, but the juxtaposition um, does strange things. So um, oh, this domain's expired. So this happens a lot with these um, mm. with these examples. So. Uh, We'll see if we can find one that works oh, here. No, Excuse me. Come, come, come. I've been, a, I've been away. Excuse me, but I've been away all day, and this oh. dog wants to wants attention. That's fine. <laughs> so I don't have a child, so I did, I did a, um, a an Allen dog head swap, which is very <laughs> strange. That one's hilarious. Um, but but there, there's something really interesting about this uh, switch up. So. Um, this is actually uh, Boone's first one that he did um, with his son Wally. Um, so again, you're going to get some practice with um, the tools to do selections and, and the editing, but it's also in thinking about um, what does it uh, mean to do. Is, um, 
favorite oh, Simon. <laughs> I, I like the cat. <laughs> I, yeah, I'll go back to the cat. Um, the the wiggle stereo stereoscopy stereoscopy. I can't pronounce it right. Is an interesting one um, because yeah. you get unexpected um, effects. So um, basically, you take a picture of a subject at two slightly different angles, and it's fun to experiment with um, the angles that it takes to do this. And you merge them into an animated GIF, and it gives a little bit of a, a stereoscopic effect. So, um, you know, uh, I'm sure Andy's is, is still here, um, Andy Forgrave, who is prolific in DS106ness. Um, yes, yes. So he's got this um, this button here um, on some. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> um, so that's kind of fun. Um, and that's always a question. Is this on its own a story? You know, probably yeah. not, but it, it's part of a story. So, um, the lollipop wiggle. Let's see this one. Uh, this is, oh, oh yeah, this is um, Shannon, who was a, a UMW student. Um, and this is basically, this is a, a two frame GIF, right, Ben? Uh, it look, yeah, pretty much. That's what it comes down that, to. That's how, that's how you do some of these. Here's, uh, let's see if this. Bennett guy does that kind of thing. Interesting. <laughs> um, so let's see. He's explaining how he's he's got his microphone. Wow, I like to use that one as as a um, as a thing for for DS106 radio. That's great. That is a nice microphone. Yeah, yeah. and there's a. Um, I'm trying to remember. There, there's a lot of good examples here. There is a. Um, a resource out there that has this collection of true um, stereoscopic images, which was done in the kind of early ages of photography. They had a special sure. viewer, and there was actually two pictures mounted with these glasses to get this effect. And you can actually oh, download yeah. those um, um, archival images and create a new version of a, a, a wiggle stereoscope. Um, so that oh, was just cool. strange because, like, you know, it's like I would have never thought of that. Um, um, these kind of ones where you insert your picture into like a uh, famous scene. So this is creep on a movie scene. So um, the idea here is uh, you take on um, this guy put his head um, onto the scene from Lord of the Rings, um, just coming over the wall. And I guess he thought it's more interesting if you do something uh, creepy. Um, there's another assignment, similar one called their um, what's it? What's that guy doing here? Um, where you insert someone unexpected into a, a still scene from from a movie, uh, so that one's kind of fun to do as well. Do you want to jump in? I'm like totally uh, just walking right here, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> or you, you're probably madly clicking on these things. There's the side I'm, I'm I'm looking at a lot of them. Yeah, um, the uh, the cat breading one was fun. Oh yeah, cat breading. Th that's just one because it's like who would ever predict this? So. Um, Again, the whole reason for this assignment bank is, is instead of um, the instructors <laughs> deciding what the students should do, a lot of times the students should do. So this kind of came up in Jim's class when someone discovered this meme going on of people um, taking these photographs, and actually a lot of them are real cats with their head in, in a piece of bread, which is just yeah. bizarre. Um, so we made it an assignment, and let's just see. I have no idea if... Oh, wait, some of these. See if they're um, still live. Yeah. Well, I, I run a script uh, every now and then to um, filter out um, the bed one. Cat breading for dummies. So oh, that some, one looks scary. Yeah, well, there's a knife in there, a piece of bread, and a cat. A cat, some bread, and a knife. Um, <laughs> so this is this is a good like tutorial here. Here's um, trying some different <laughs> versions of the cat. Uh, we have some real bread going on here. Uh, this is Brave. This is the part where you give up, lock your door so your cats don't get you and nurse your wounds. So yeah, it didn't go to well together. So that person tried to really do uh, cat breading. <laughs> oh, Ben's listening. Hey, Ben. Uh, <laughs> um, oops. Oh, that one got taken down. I this know my wife. Yeah, my wife's one is still there. She just did hers. Yeah, right there. Oh yeah, the tea, tea toasting kitty. Yeah. This is great. Like the the Rhymes family get together, they do uh, DS six. Yeah, right. So you know, obviously, it's easy to do in Photoshop. I um, I think when I did mine, um, 
is we needed a new meme. So um, this is uh, Jim Groom breading. <laughs> yep, oh. exactly. Uh, no, I prefer space. the cat. Forgive me, but I prefer the cat. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> so do I. Now, um, Ben, tough. I'm trying to see. I don't see any email or messages from um, from Jennifer in here or Emily. So hopefully she's just a little bit late. Um, so just wanted to give uh, folks an idea about assignments in there, talk about them. Uh, I didn't have a, a real plan for the show. Uh, I was hoping other people would, would jump in. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, okay, so uh, I, I, I wasn't going to mention this one, but I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll mention this one if you want to pull it out. Um, the TED Talk. Oh, yeah. One, the, the fantasy TED on. Talks. Yeah. So it's and, and yours, right? It's mine, I, so I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to talk about it, but no, I um, already had, I had it already in, in a tab here, so let me pull. No, it. it's an example. It goes along with the uh, um, the slide guy and the stuff like that. It's a nice sort of uh, not not exactly a softball one into the whole assignment thing, but uh, when I did it, I was like, oh, I had so much fun doing this. I'm going to go ahead and provide a template. So I, I created a a PSD file that or a PNG that people could then download and then go ahead and put their own fantasy TED Talk thing in. And uh, uh, sure enough, a lot of people said, oh, thanks, that's awesome. Uh, but then in good DS-106 fashion, uh, people riffed on that and they said, Ooh, I, I changed the template a little bit and things like that. And so it just made the whole, it, it made the whole thing just that much better. Yeah, the idea is to play with the idea of um, uh, the TED, I'm already forget blank on the TED motto, ideas that matter or something like that? Or? Yeah, yeah, worth talking about or something. Ideas worth talking about. Um, TED, so, ideas worth lecturing about. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I, <laughs> <laughs> so the whole idea is like you get to pick who is going to give a TED talk. So. Um, oh, you got to show your Lassie one. That was hilarious. Yeah. So um, Lassie kind of confessing um, that... Uh, she had a gender change. Um, and, and the template you have, I, I can't remember this. If, I don't know if I added it. Um, you notice that Lassie is sort of behind the shadowy figures in the front of the audience, mm -hmm. um, which, again, is, is what the layering uh, bit of your photo editing allows you to do. Um, here's one that Martha did. That's not Martha, sorry. Yes, it is Martha. Yeah. Um, she put Teletubbies on, on there. The <laughs> Tinky Winky. <laughs> So you know, it, it allows you to play um, play with reality. The Walking Ted. <laughs> yes, this is brilliant. I think he's got a zombie doing it, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, the oh, I'm doing that one. I love that one. That is that. I love it. I've not seen that one before. <laughs> and you know, you could go crazy and, and put on stay on the screen an animated GIF, you know, and just change it up a little bit. And one thing I like to remind people is that. You don't have to be strict about the way the assignment is written. If you don't mm -hmm. like it, um, or if you can think of an alternative way to interpret it, it's not like you get graded on how well you follow you know, instructions. Um, as well as I want to remind folks, um, this rating here, when, when the person uploads their thing, um, Ben might have said, I think this is four stars. Um, this has been voted, so anyone who visits the site can click and say, if um, I think this is worth more, and I've already voted on this, so I can't click on it, um, right. click on the fifth star. So this is a way that we crowdsource this difficulty rating um, on these assignments, is that um, as people do them or get familiar with them, they could say, this is hard, this is easy. And then for our class, you know, of course, for headless, it doesn't matter how many stars you do. But as a parameter, I think I said this week, try 10 stars worth of assignments. Right. So, which means you could do like 10 one stars, two five stars, or mix it up. Um, and, and that was the whole uh, brilliance of this um, idea that um, originally uh, uh, Martha created uh, from sort of a brainstorm that we had in late 2010 when DS-106 was first coming together. Um, you, know, and now, you know, Jim, when he talks about it, his, you know, he talks about it when he taught the class before it went open, he had his ten holy assignments that he thought were really good. And, and so basically everybody would do the same assignment, um, of which there's value in people doing the same assignment. But this whole idea about what if it was a place that people could sort of uh, choose and also um, the stuff they wanted to do as assignments, as well as contribute uh, things. So if you don't like the assignments, 
make up a new one. Yeah. And I noticed also uh, you were talking about the stars, and I noticed that um, uh, Dave Barr uh, has uh, completed that with the with the eleven stars or however many, and he clearly just set himself the task to do uh, to do it all in one go. And I noticed there was one post after the other after the other, and he goes, and now we know this is five stars. Now this is six, and another one, and seven, and then he got to I think eleven stars, and then he goes, and now do I get a free cup of coffee? <laughs> it's pretty prolific, and, and I know like. Um, for my students who had to do a certain number of stars, sometimes they get too focused on the stars. Like, I got to get these stars done because they're getting a grade on it. And so uh, we hope that as people are doing this, um, they get um, as motivated or more just by um, the the ability to try things they haven't done before and, and to create and interpret uh, the assignments. So um, it's fine to get caught up in the stars, um, and it's also fine not to really give a hoot about the stars um, and just look for yeah. interesting work to do. Can I ask you, if, if it's not appropriate to ask the question now, then just park it, but can I ask you about the idea of making tutorials and what's the rationale behind that? Because it is something that I, can, I, I could enjoy doing, uh, but I am not really sure uh, what, where, where your audience is for it. No, that's, a, that's, that's like the right on spot question. Um, and I think it was... We added it probably the first time around in using uh, DS-106 because, uh, first of all, when we, um, when we teach it and, and also in, in any format, we really want people to um, not only do the assignment and talk about you know, why they did it, um, but, um, okay, Ben, I see you. Got to go. Do your wave goodbye. Um, but also Bye, like how, they, how they did it because it's oh, useful um, if you haven't done something or you see a technique it's useful if there's an explanation about their um, how it was done. Uh, so in some way, it, it's sort of helping people with the, the software mechanics without mm -hmm. us as instructors being responsible for spending a lot of time uh, putting together screencasts and tutorials because there's lots of tutorials out there. And, and most students figure out they, they don't know how to use GIMP. Um, they have to do, um, you know, they have to, you know, learn how to do something in GIMP, and they say, wow, there's like so many... Uh, videos on YouTube that show me how to do this. Mm -hmm. So, but we wanted we wanted things in DS one hundred six where people um, we always ask them to write about their process. But the tutorial is a little bit of an expansion. So, mm -hmm. and people usually the students usually ask, um, what should I put in a tutorial? Mm -hmm. So, and it's open to you how you want to write. It can be just a list of steps. It could be a list of screenshots with steps. It could be a screencast. Um, however, I usually um, told people like um, if you hadn't done this assignment what would be the most appropriate way if you came across it that would help you learn how to do the assignment um, so uh, we added as a component to the class is the students had to do at least two tutorials uh, during a semester uh, that um, could go on the website and by using the same tagging system if you use the, the tags for the tutorials when you write up um, your blog post, and it can be the same blog post. Your blog post can be your work and the tutorial, or it can be separate. Um, it'll go to the site and be listed there um, as a way to help people do that assignment in the future. Okay, you see, I was that I wasn't aware of. So, so okay, so now I understand that. So then, what I would be aiming for would be not the how many how many uh, uh, bad ways did I try that didn't work, but actually having tried 10 different ways, uh, if I was to do this again, this is what I would have wished I'd known to help me do it and then be able to, to, um, you know, to, to get it that much better. That, that is, it's kind of an expansion of the documenting your process. Um, so, and and it's, it's also part of the thing is in... Uh, not to generalize, but in school and the work that students usually do, they're so focused on getting the thing done, mm. like the final product, and we really try to encourage them to share um, all the things that led up to that. So that's why we ask them to blog about it. And so um, in any of these things, like there are small techniques um, that maybe they discovered or maybe they learned elsewhere um, on how to do things, like how to create you know, an irregular selection or, or how to make something have a, a glow effect. Um, so 
there are always some little techniques or even just the features that they're using. Like, wow, I didn't know there was a puppet transform thing in Photoshop to make me distort you know, the face of Gollum. Um, so it, the detail of the tutorial is not anything that we really grade. Um, it's just that we're looking for you to be able to sort of explain how you created something. I sometimes think that uh, it's, um, you know, to get into too much detail, sometimes it's like, well, people would know this. But I guess that's the, it, it's that balance, isn't it, where you're not uh, saying uh, so much that's obvious, but also, you know, stuff that you think actually this could be useful. Like, for example, what uh, Rochelle did with her uh, when she was talking about garage band and she said, you know, sometimes what I do when I've got a snippet that is too low is I double the track. Right. And it's a simple thing that actually, unless you think about it, you don't think about it. And it helped a lot because I redid mine uh, uh, on using that little trick and it made a big difference with all the things. This was with the audio uh, uh, last week. Um, right. And I guess with, the, with the, uh, the GIMP and with Photoshop, it's the same. There's like tricks that people uh, learn and that's what's most helpful to share. That, that's right. In fact, I, I really um, let me get this screen share back up again. I really want to highlight um, Rochelle Rocky Lou's um, work because um, what she does in terms of the way she writes up her post. Um, and now, if you did this for everything, it, it would be. It takes a lot of time. It usually takes more time to write up how you did it than it took <laughs> to do it. But um, yeah. she really sets the bar high here for how she um, she narrates what she did. Um, She's linking um, to the references that will help people. She's talking about the software that she's using, this call recorder thing, um, and she's talking about it, and, and it goes on and on again, and then it's got the pieces of it and how she had to go back and edit it, um, and then there's an update at the bottom. So um, Rochelle is doing a tremendous job in um, narrating and, and documenting her process. And, and the other thing I think is important um, I can't remember if I really uh, mentioned it, is, um, you know, a lot of these things, especially in the visual and whatnot, um, you're using media from other places. So I really like to see my students, I encourage them, if you're using an image, a sound, a video, um, whatever from another site, um, link to where you found it. Um, it's a way of giving credit to the source. Um, it opens up the door to talking about things like, do you have the rights to reuse this? And we get into the Creative Commons discussion. But it's really important to be able um, to uh, show the materials that you use because you might have gotten a picture of an old radio from this great archive of old radios. And it's going to be useful for people to know that there's a resource out there. Um, and, and I know when you're doing stuff, you get so caught up in just the finding images. Um, it's a really good practice as you're located in your media. Um, whatever you do, it can be just a text file, it can be bookmarks. Um, to save the places where you found your media so you can do this part later when you're writing it up. So um, when I'm working on a project, I always open a blank text document, and when I download something, I put the file name, and then I put a, a tab, and then this is where I got it from. And that way, when I do my write-up post, um, I have a list of credits um, because it, it's just important to do as, as a practice and, and as a demonstration to give credit where credit's due. Mm. I'm getting I'm getting a little better now with the postings to uh, you know to just connect up so you know because I, I go off and I find this tutorial that tutorial whatever just to s fix the problem to sort the problem out and as you say it's very easy to forget I'm getting better now at going and actually this is what I did and here is the link click on there and it'll and you can go and have a look at it if it would help you even if actually it wasn't that helpful but at least you know what it is that I I've used and you can you can use it if you want to. And, and again, it's a lot to do. So you know, I know now you know because I've done DS one hundred six many times now. When I do an animated GIF, it's like I'm not gonna like recite again. You know, so sometimes I'll just say this is how I did it back in this example. If I already have it written up, or or sometimes as you said, it's just maybe calling out one particular wrinkle that you found useful uh, in doing it. So uh, again, it's not like anybody. Like nobody gets graded in DS106, but even with my students, it's not like I'm sitting there like grading them on the accuracy of, of their tutorial. Um, mm -hmm. if, the tu if it makes sense to them and if it fully documents um, 
their, their process, it'll be clear in the way they wrote it up. If they just said, you know, um, I made this in Photoshop, you know, it's pretty clear that that's not really documenting what they did uh, to a sufficient amount of detail. Um, so it's, it's a learning process, and, and people aren't used to necessarily, um, uh, it's what my pro one of my colleagues calls narrating the work that we do. Um, it's, it's, um, I, I know um, my Michael and this, when I watch a movie on a DVD, um, I, I then, I'm, I'm, I enjoy the movie, or maybe I don't, but then I'm all into the extras, and I'm learning about the sound effects, and the makeups, and the outtakes, and, and all the meta stuff that went into making the movie, to me, is fascinating. So mm -hmm. this is kind of mm -hmm. like the, the, the extras for the work that you do, is to provide some window of insight into, into your creative process. I have I have to say that you know when I was struggling with that uh, sort of first animated GIF that I made, um, I uh, and I eventually found uh, Michael's tutorial uh, that just walked you through a very simple process and it was very clear and it was just it it really was like a godsend. I mean I ha you have to say because I I struggled I tried so many different ways and then I just said I just need to follow something so that I learn the basic idea of what it is that I'm trying to do. And, and it is really a, a, a very, very skillful thing to do, to do something where you say enough that the person can follow uh, what it is, not knowing even what level of technical skill they have, um, and then enough but not so much that you just lose them and, and actually they're not able to follow the process. So, no, it is, it's, it's uh, uh, I, I understand what you and mean. And honestly, if, if, you do, if you do any of these, if you do one or two like, in incredible detail, that's a huge help. You know, mm. Again, I, I wouldn't tell anybody that they have to do this for everything they create because it takes a lot of time. And, and I don't do it every time. Um, mm. So, you know, it, it's, it's just once in a while, um, if you think it would be helpful for someone, it's just another one of these many uh, pay it forward things that we do in DS106. Mm. Okay. So I don't think Emily's going to make it. And uh, we've okay. gone on for an hour. So, okay. Um, let's see. Oops. Uh, oh, she's ready to join the hangout. Oh, she's oh. installing something. Wait. I got a message on the Twitter, so uh, I will hang on a little bit. Where is my Twitter? I got so many <laughs> windows open on my. Let me try my phone here. All right. So we will wait for you, Emily. She said something about she had to install something. Uh, uh, oh, she's installing Hangout. So. Um, I'm willing to hang out for Emily to show up. Sure, yes, because yeah, yeah, cause if she's making the effort, we might as well. And I, I, Emily was the person that you said might do something about uh, GIMP and help do, do some kind of stuff around that. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to tweet her. We are waiting <laughs> patiently, and Colin's barking. <laughs> and Col Colin says, not so patiently. Yeah. <laughs> I got some things to go out, so uh, we'll hang on a little bit here for uh, Emily. Yeah. So, um, how's the um, how's the the Google Hangouts community? Because I mean, Google Hangouts, the Google Plus community. I, I, I saw we're we're well above a hundred people now, which is good. I I know it's just it's just been increasing increasing regularly all, all the time. Uh, there's only there's the same kind the same number of people more or less who, as usual with this kind of thing, who post regularly. And uh, and who kind of are you know working with each other and so on, um, but the numbers keep uh, do keep increasing and um, uh, not sure. And there are some people. I mean, because I've been posting some things, kind of doing across from Twitter to to Google Plus. There are some people who seem to be doing this just through Google Plus. Right. Um, and I thought that was interesting. Because so I you know I posted uh, the because I love animated gifs and I, before I die I'm going to learn how to do them really well. <laughs> well before then, well before then. <laughs> and I found this somebody um, I think Chris was the name of the person she she tweeted some a, a link from some beautiful beautiful yes. beautiful animated gifs. Yeah, that, that and wired I article. Yeah. Yes, it was just so beautiful and uh, uh, and I thought well. 
not everybody is on Twitter who is on Google Plus because I'm doing both. I, I get a sense for that. So I put it up and actually, you know, people commented and they were grateful that we put it up there because they had they wouldn't have seen it otherwise. Oh, we've got somebody. Yay! <laughs> Hi. You made it. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, sorry, my meeting ran over. That's fine, Way that's fine. <laughs> We, we, we run when, when we have to, and I'm mm -hmm. glad because I was almost ready to sign off. So, Emily, this is Mariana from the UK. Hi. And uh, we've never actually met before, so it's exciting yeah. to meet you. But um, uh, give us a little intro, and, and, and how the heck did you get into DS106? Um, well, I work at Wellesley College in the IT department. I actually work in the systems team now, but I used to work in instructional technology. And I first heard about... DS-106 through Trip Kirkpatrick. He's at Yale, and he was an open participant like two years ago, and he was just mentioning it, and I was like, that sounds really cool. I should look into this, and I did, and, and it just was so awesome. I decided to stick with it. Yeah, and so why do it for something that you don't get credit for and it's going to take you a huge amount of time? <laughs> it's fun. I get these really cool products as a result, and I don't know, I'm definitely polishing up my multimedia skills and web design skills and everything throughout the process. That's cool. Well, well I mean, I remember when, when your stuff started coming in. It was just so useful um, to show as examples, uh, you mm -hmm. know, especially for the Mary Washington students, which is, which is the, the whole benefit of having this uh, open participant part of DS-106 is that students uh, see and interact with a larger group of creative people, and it all feeds back on itself. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about this week's um, giant list of things to do. Um, we've been running through some of our favorite assignments. Um, we've talked about some ideas for selecting. Um, whatever you want to talk about, um, I know people were eager to see some uh, or just hear some tips for using GIMP or if you want to do some demos um, or if you just want to talk about some of your favorite uh, work that you've done for visual. Oh, goodness. Um... <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm actually more of a Photoshop person. My experience with GIMP is playing around with it and going, how how does this similar to Photoshop? Like, what's is this similar in name or something like that? Um, so so usually with GIMP, it's trial and error when I'm like working on my home computer, since I have Photoshop through work but not home because it's a very expensive application. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people don't have it for that reason. I, I will um, let you know because I'm gonna be. I have an older version of Photoshop. Um, there is a special through the end of the year because photo Adobe went to this model of instead of selling the software, it's a subscription basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the books, the cheapest package is like mm -hmm. twenty bucks a month. But they have this one; it's called the Photographer's Package. So it's Photoshop, Lightroom, and something else for ten bucks a month, um, which is I'd rather not give Adobe ten bucks a month because um, I already have a copy of Photoshop. But um, That's that's a lot cheaper than buying the application outright, though. Yeah, yeah, because it, it was pretty expensive, so I may be upgrading to that version. Yeah. Um, so how do you, how do you go about picking assignment. assignments? Yeah, in the visual. Uh, personally, I tend to look through them and see if like the thumbnail just captures my attention, because like sometimes. They're, you know, things that obviously are, are interesting for some people, but I'm just like, eh, that doesn't really spark my imagination. Or, but, but, like, if I see something really funny or just a really cool technique, I'm like, that's interesting. Let me read the description. And half the time, it does end up being something I want to do, and half the time, I'm like, well, I'll save that for later, and then I never end up doing them. <laughs> um, let's see. Like, uh, one of my favorite ones is actually the Obama ties one, I think it's called. Hmm. Let, me, let me see if I can. Do you want to try sharing your screen so we can see what you're Yeah. Looking. I'm go oh, yeah. I, I'm actually going to let's see. Screen share. I love that effect when we see oh, your Google Hangouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So, so I'm on my blog, erstrongoutpress.com, um, and let's see, Lord of the Obama, that was it. So here we have the assignment description when it loads. 
And so it was, it's just to put Obama into your favorite movie. And, mm. um, and so I decided to put him into Lord of the Rings. And so here he is <laughs> as Aragorn holding one of those orb things that they can use to sort of see the future or see, see people elsewhere. And, um, and then here I found a picture of him eating, I think it was a sandwich. <laughs> and I stuck him in one of the pub scenes with Mary and Pippin. And that one I actually had to do a lot of work to get the, the color scheme to match because I think he was like in a very bright light whereas the image is very dark. And so I got to do a lot of fun effects with like layers and, and, um, and that sort of thing. That I was, 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 was going to say you really matched the, the tone of the, uh, the rest of the scene there with that one. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, I'd done like a backlight or something to get exactly the right shading. <laughs> Were you, were you going to say something? I was just going to ask you something about the sort of things that you had to do in order to get the colors to match, because I have noticed that that is something that uh, I find quite challenging. Um, so I play around a lot with the RGB channels. And um, let's see. So I don't know if this is going to work. Um, well, so it's, uh, <laughs> I don't have Photoshop installed on this laptop, <laughs> so I'm worry. trying to figure out how to show it. Um, let's see. So, when, well, you know how there's the, all those different tools in, uh, and uh, the adjustment panel in the right on, on the screen, and one of them allow, is, uh, it has like this little graph of like red, green, blue, and black lines, and you can actually just move each line slightly and like shift around the colors until you get an exact match for what you're looking for. And it's, it's, it's really fun to, to play with the channels that way, because it's like, move it slightly, see this dramatic effect, move it slightly back the other way and lessen the effect. And it's, it's, it's an interesting way to play with it. Yeah, I mean, Photoshop has a number of ones. I mean, I use, there's a, um, there's the thing called curves, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but again, you can manipulate the range of tones in a different way than you do by just doing adjustment contrast. Mm -hmm. um, in the levels, you can, you can do things like just adjust the red channel, so if you want to decrease the amount of reds in there, uh, and there's a colorize uh, thing that I also use uh, sometimes. And sometimes it's like dropping the opacity a little bit. Um, uh, so it's, it's kind of hard, but uh, it, it's like Emily says, you start fiddling with the sliders and you get a feel for, for okay. some of the ways you can make things fit. Yeah. So what if, uh, you might want to switch your screen share off, Emily. Oh, sure. <laughs> I like that. There's, there's my converging lines photo. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, I don't know what, what kind there of words of wisdom. What kind of words of wisdom do you have for people in uh, Visual Week? Play around with things. You can get really cool effects just by trying different combinations of things and and have some really unexpected results. Um, and it. it one of the great things about working in something like Photoshop or GIMP is you can do something crazy and have it turn out horrible and undo it. You know, it's not like working with paintings or something like that where it's irreversible. So that's that's one of the things I always love doing about that. It's just trying a whole bunch of different things and seeing what works. Do you try to explain what you're doing to colleagues or friends? Um... To some extent. Uh, so some, some colleagues... Uh, you know, see my see my blog when it gets posted on Twitter, and so and so they'll they'll talk to me about the particular thing I did that, for that assignment. And usually it's just, oh, that was really cool. But sometimes they do have more knowledge of how the tools are work are, are used, and, and they can comment on that. Now, if I do a screen share, can I show you? Can I show you this thing that I created on the train today? Just uh, speaking to what you were saying about experimenting, Emily. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Let me see. I don't know if it's going to work. So if I go screen share now, OK, and I select, and I start. OK. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Is this a photo? Ooh. 
So I was remembering just uh, just from memory because I wasn't in any place where I could do anything uh, significant. I remembered reading some of the things that we had for assignments. Uh, one of them was about taking some stuff from a different perspective and 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 something about you know. Uh, by manipulating a photo for long enough that you eventually ended up with something that actually you don't even know if it's a photo. And I used Camera Plus and I was playing with my iPhone in Camera Plus. <laughs> and I ended up with that. <laughs> so anyway, just it just reminded me when you said, Emily, about playing around and just noticing what happens with things. You know, it's just... A <laughs> yeah, it's a great example, you know, and, yeah. and you know, certainly in working with the mobile apps, that's... Uh, often some of the best ways are you can try seeing what you can do in terms of manipulating images mm -hmm. um, with, with either effects or combining and, and there are people who just do some incredible artwork uh, just on their mobile platform um, but then you know there's also all the things that you can do on your desktop so I, I'd agree sometimes um, you just discover something unexpected uh, by fiddling around with sliders and, and features Silence. <laughs> I think the other thing I would recommend um, to people is Adobe has a lot of tutorials on YouTube. They've got an entire channel of them. And so even if you're working with GIMP, and GIMP has excellent documentation online, but if you just want to learn how to do a particular technique, those, pho those uh, Photoshop tutorials on YouTube are fantastic. Um, and they're usually pretty short because they're focused on something specific. Yeah, and that's usually what we find. You know, we, uh, the the tagline I think Martha said this a lot is like Google is your best friend. Um, not, yeah. not in the not not in the aspect of like they're taking care of you because we'll not go down that route. But in terms of being able to find the resources on how to do something, or when you get an error message, um, invariably they find uh, the resources. And again, the beauty is that uh, we end up not having to teach uh, the nuts and bolts of software and. And it seems more effective when people um, learn to figure things out. Now, I know that I in in my past classes I would read my students and they would say, "I've been trying this for four hours," <laughs> and so I would say, like, if you struggle with something more than half an hour or an hour, that means pull back, reconsider, ask for help. Like, you should never spend hours and hours trying to do just a simple, not a simple. A particular task, um, and so you know, I don't know if that's a, a useful guideline, but there's no reason to keep banging your head against the wall on this. <laughs> that is helpful as a guideline, particularly for those of us who are very stubborn and want to work it out ourselves. <laughs> I know that feeling. I've been there. We're like, <laughs> I know I'm spending way too much time. This is just a daily create. Why am I doing a five-hour edit of a video? Uh, but I know sometimes uh, I just get bitten by an idea and like I have to carry it to completion and you know I can't do anything else like like eat or sleep or, or um, do you know be social until I finish something which which may not be the best advice but um, that, that, that to me that's a good sign when people get that focused yeah that's healthy well I want to thank you guys for showing up and great to meet you Emily and my first yeah, time uh, seeing Mariana I'm just tickled that you, you, you logged on here, so thanks a lot. Pleasure. It's been lovely yeah. to have the opportunity to talk and just get a sense for uh, where people are and ideas that people have to offer to, you know, as, as we, particularly as we go into uh, the, the visual stuff, which is more of a challenge, certainly, for, mm -hmm. for me, because I'm wanting to learn how to do it properly. Audio, I wasn't really that bothered. <laughs> That's good because audio is, is often people have the most challenge with audio. So, <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Have a great day or evening, yeah. everybody. Bye. You too. Bye bye. bye.